Picture this, you're sitting at your computer, cursor dancing across the screen, clicking, scrolling and typing away. Now imagine doing all of that without moving a single finger, just by thinking about it. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, this is Knowing is Winning and welcome to 2025, where brain implants have gone from Star Trek fantasies to reality shows featuring paralyzed gamers absolutely crushing their friends in video games. The brain-computer interface revolution isn't just knocking at our door anymore. It's already inside, made itself comfortable on a couch, and is apparently beating us at our own games. The stories coming out of this field are stranger, funnier, and more heartwarming than any sitcom writer could dream up. Now, Let's start with uh, Noland Arbo, the 30-year-old Arizona man who became Neuralink's first human guinea pig, sorry, um, a research participant, and inadvertently became the world's most famous cyborg. After a diving accident left him paralyzed from the shoulders down, Noland volunteered to have Elon Musk's brain chip surgically implanted in early 2024. What happened next reads like a gamer's fever dream mixed with a medical miracle. Within months of getting his chip, Noland wasn't just controlling a computer cursor with his thoughts. He was absolutely demolishing his friends in video games. He summed it up very nicely. The games I can play now are leaps and bounds better than previous ones. I'm beating my friends in games that as quadriplegic I should not be beating them in, he told researchers. But here is where it gets delightfully absurd. Nolan logged 69 hours of brain chip usage in a single week, with 35 hours dedicated to official Neuralink sessions and 34 hours to pure personal fun, mostly gaming on weekends. Imagine explaining to your boss that you need time off because your brain implant has a better work-life balance than, than you do. And um, the cherry on the top? When Nolan made his first social media post using only his thoughts, he joked that while Twitter had previously banned him from being mistaken as a bot, X welcomed him back precisely because he now technically was one. Sometimes the universe has a sense of humor about technological irony, after all. Of course, being a pioneering cyborg isn't all high scores in social media fame. Nolan's implant um, experienced uh, what can only be described as a very expensive case of technical difficulties. After about a month after the surgery, some of the hair-thin threads connecting the chip to his brain decided to pack up and leave, like disgruntled employees quitting mid-project. This um, retraction of electrodes caused his performance to plummet faster than a stock market crash, measured sometimes in uh, bits per second. Basically, um, it's how accurately he could control the cursor. Imagine trying to explain to tech support that your brain is experiencing connectivity issues. Fortunately, Neuralink's engineers managed to jerry-jig some software fixes that not only restored his abilities, but actually made him better than before. Um, it's like getting a software update that actually improves things instead of uh, mysteriously making your device slower. The whole incident perfectly captures the current state of brain implants. Incredibly advanced technology that still occasionally behaves like a you know, temperamental printer. No one handled it with a remarkable grace essentially becoming the world's first beta tester for cyborg technology while maintaining his sense of humor about the whole situation. Now, while Neuralink grabs headlines, there is a fascinating global competition brewing in the brain implant space that reads like a medical technology Olympics. Uh, the US uh, might have the flashiest marketing, but um, other countries are quietly making remarkable progress with their own approaches. China has entered the arena with their Beinao number one chip, and they are not messing around. A partnership between the Chinese Institute for Brain Research and new cyber neurotech 
has already implanted three patients and plans to reach 13 by the end of 2025, with ambition for a 50-patient trial the uh, following year. Their approach is slightly different, though. They use semi-invasive chips that sit on the brain surface rather than penetrating deep into the tissue, which is like um, choosing to park in a driveway instead of the uh, garage. Uh, the early results from China are impressive. Patients using robotic arms to pour water and control computers, proving that the human brain's desire to manipulate the physical world transcends cultural boundaries. There is, um, after all, something universally human about the satisfaction of successfully pouring a cup of water, even when you are doing it through a robot controlled by thoughts transmitted via a wireless brain chip. Meanwhile, Paradromics, a Texas-based startup that sounds like it should be making 3D movies, completed its first human implant at the University of Michigan. Um, their approach involved a neat 20-minute insertion and removal procedure during the epilepsy patient's um, already scheduled brain surgery. Talk about multitasking, getting your uh, seizures treated and advancing neuroscience uh, simultaneously. Now, perhaps the most entertaining development in brain implant technology is the emergence of neural streaming, essentially Twitch for cyborgs. Nolan Arbo has become something of a celebrity in this space, hosting live streams where he demonstrates how he calibrates his brain implant and measures its performance. Picture a cooking show, but instead of today we'll be making pasta, it's Today, we'll be optimizing my neural interface to click on rapidly blinking icons. These streams offer a fascinatingly transparent look into life with a brain implant. Viewers can watch in real time as Nolan's thoughts translate into cursor movements, complete with the occasional glitch that would make any IT professional wince with sympathy. It's educational, inspiring, and occasionally hilarious when technology doesn't cooperate with uh, human expectations. The second Neuralink patient, known only as Alex, has been making similar waves in the gaming community. Um, he described the um, experience of playing the first-person shooters with his implant as follows. Just running around is so enjoyable because I can look side to side and not need to move quad stick left and right. I can think about where to look and it goes where I want it to. It's insane. Well, it's fantastic, actually. It's kind of a testimonial that makes you wonder if we are witnessing the birth of competitive neural gaming leagues. Now, the, uh, the uh, third Neuralink patient, Bradford G. Smith, has taken brain-computer interaction to an even more surreal level by incorporating AI assistance into his communication. Smith, who has ALS and lost his ability to speak, now uses his brain implant in conjunction with Grok, Elon Musk's AI chatbot, to help compose and refine his social media posts. This creates a delightfully philosophical question. When someone with a brain implant uses AI to help craft their thoughts into words, who is really doing the talking? It's like having a really sophisticated autocorrect that lives in the cloud and has opinions about your uh, communication style. Well, Smith uh, seems to embrace the um, human AI brain chip collaboration, treating it as a natural evolution of how we interact with technology rather than some existential crisis about authentic communication. The practical benefits are undeniable. The AI assistance dramatically speeds up Smith's ability to communicate, transforming what, we, what might be a laborious process into fluid conversation. It is assistive technology taken to its logical extreme, where the boundaries between human thought, artificial intelligence, and neural interfaces blur into something entirely new. While the gaming achievements uh, grab attention, brain implants are tackling some genuinely serious medical challenges with approaches that sometimes border on the absurd. Synchron, one of the Neuralink's main competitors, recently demonstrated their system by having a paralyzed patient control smart home devices 
through an Apple Vision Pro headset. Um, the patient could um, adjust lighting, turn on fans, activate pet feeders, and run robotic vacuums. All by thinking about it while wearing what essentially um, amounts to expensive ski goggles. The image of someone controlling their entire home environment through pure thought while wearing a VR headset is so quintessentially 2025 that it almost parodies itself. Yet, the technology represents a profound leap in independence for people with paralysis, transforming them from passive recipients of care into active controllers of their environment. Research institutions are exploring even more ambitious applications. Scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory are developing implants that can remain in the brain for extended periods, potentially enabling long-term therapeutic applications. They are working on devices that could help people with um, locked-in syndrome communicate and assist those who have lost the ability to speak. The researchers speak about their goals with kind of a casual optimism, usually reserved for discussing weekend plans. Like, uh, we have these dreams about being able to help people who are paralyzed or people who can speak. Can we get them uh, to talk uh, one of these days? And I'm sure they will be able to do it. Now, the applications for brain implants extend far beyond the obvious uses. Venturing into territory that sounds like it was brainstormed during a particularly creative pharmaceutical commercial meeting. Researchers are investigating whether these devices could help with depression, chronic pain, and even memory enhancement. The memory enhancement research is particularly fascinating and slightly terrifying. Scientists have developed brain computer interfaces that can identify pre-stimulus brain activity associated with successful memory formation and use that information to optimize when new information is presented. So essentially, they are creating a system that knows when your brain is in the optimal state to learn something new and times educational content accordingly. Imagine a future where your brain implant interrupts your day with a notification your hippocampus is currently operating at peak efficiency. Now would be an excellent time to study for that certification exam you have been avoiding. So it's, um, <laughs> it is pro productivity optimization taken to a neurological extreme that would make the most dedicated life hacker weep with joy. Um, the depression and chronic pain applications are more straightforward, but no less remarkable. Brain implants could potentially monitor neural activity associated with mood disorders and provide targeted stimulation to alleviate symptoms. It is like having a very sophisticated mood ring that can actually do something about what it detects, rather than just changing colors judgmentally.